Let's be honest, folks, we all know the score. There are two justice systems in this country, one for the haves and one for the have-nots. The rich, they get a slap on the wrist, a fine they can pay with pocket change. The poor, they get the book thrown at them, stuck in a system rigged against them from the start. This isn't justice, it's a sick joke. A system where your bank balance determines your fate, and it's got to stop. We need real reform, equal justice for all, not just those who can afford it. Look, I get it, the police have a tough job, but that doesn't excuse everything, especially when it comes to protests. People have a right to make their voices heard, to speak out against injustice, but too often peaceful protesters are met with force, mislabeled as troublemakers, arrested and charged for simply exercising their rights. This isn't right. We need police who can tell the difference between genuine dissent and actual threats. We need dialogue, not riot gear. We've all seen the headlines, celebrities and CEOs caught red-handed, but instead of hard time, they get a slap on the wrist, a hefty fine maybe, a team of lawyers to make the problem disappear. Meanwhile, people struggling to make ends meet get caught in the system's gears. Unable to afford decent legal representation, they face harsher punishments for lesser offenses. This isn't justice, it's a two-tiered system that protects the powerful and punishes the vulnerable. The Hare Hills riots didn't happen in a vacuum. They were the result of years of neglect, of a community feeling ignored and marginalized. When tensions boiled over, the response was swift and brutal, but instead of addressing the root causes, the focus was on punishment, on making an example of those involved. But we can't arrest our way out of these problems. We need to listen to marginalised communities and address their concerns before things reach a boiling point. Section 5. Southport's cry for help. Imprisonment without understanding. The Southport riots were another symptom of a system failing its people. Years of austerity, coupled with a lack of opportunity, created a powder keg of frustration. When it exploded, the response was predictable. Mass arrests harsh sentences and a deafening silence about the underlying issues. We can't keep locking people up without addressing the reasons behind their anger. We need to invest in our communities, create opportunities and listen to the voices of those crying out for help. Section 6. Living in fear, the shadow of terrorism and the immigration debate. The fear of terrorism is real, the threat is real, but we can't let that fear dictate our every move. We can't let it be used to justify discrimination or erode our values. The vast majority of immigrants are just trying to build a better life. They're not the enemy. We need to address the root causes of terrorism, not scapegoat entire communities. Section 7. A global outrage. The fight against an ideology of hate. The fight against Islamist terrorism is not a fight against Islam. It's a fight against an ideology of hate that perverts a religion for its own twisted ends. And it's a fight that demands a united front. We must stand together against this threat, support those fighting for freedom and tolerance, and reject the voices of division and fear. Section 8. United We Stand. The Coalition Against Terrorism and Organised Crime. Terrorism and organised crime are global threats that require global solutions. The coalition of the willing brings together nations from around the world to share intelligence, coordinate efforts and dismantle these networks of hate and violence. This is not about one nation imposing its will on others. It's about working together to build a safer world for everyone. We must remain vigilant, strengthen our partnerships and never let down our guard. Section 9, justice for all, the illusion of equality in the courtroom, the ideal of justice is blind, impartial, but the reality is far different. The poor, the marginalised, they don't get the same shake as the wealthy and well-connected. We need to level the playing field, ensure everyone has access to adequate legal representation, and demand a justice system that truly lives up to its name. Section 10, the grip of fear how criminal networks hold communities hostage. 
Criminal networks thrive on fear. They intimidate, they exploit, they control. They prey on the vulnerable and silence those who dare to speak out. We need to break their grip on our communities, support law enforcement efforts to dismantle these networks, and empower residents to reclaim their neighborhoods. Hash Hash Section 11. The face of terror, violent jihad and its devastating impact. Violent jihad is a global scourge. From the streets of London to cities around the world, its victims are innocent men, women and children. We must never forget their faces. We must never grow numb to the pain and suffering caused by this ideology of hate. And we must never waver in our resolve to defeat it. Hash Hash Section 12. Speaking truth to power. Protesting terrorism is not a crime. Protesting against terrorism is not a crime. It's an act of defiance, a refusal to be silenced by fear, a powerful statement that we will not tolerate hate and violence. We must protect the right to peaceful protest. Listen to the voices of those speaking out against extremism and never equate dissent with disloyalty. Hash Hash, Section 13, the seduction of extremism, radicalization, and the recruitment of youth. Radicalization is a complex issue. There's no single profile, no easy answer. But we can't ignore the factors that make young people vulnerable to extremist ideologies. We need to address social isolation, economic inequality, and online radicalization. We need to provide young people with hope, opportunity, and a sense of belonging. Section 14. Caught in the crossfire, the vulnerability of the poor and marginalized. The poor and marginalized are often caught in the crossfire between law enforcement and criminal networks targeted by both, protected by neither. We need to build trust between communities and law enforcement, address the root causes of crime and extremism, and ensure that everyone feels safe and protected. Section 15, Bridging the Divide. Dialogue, not incarceration, is the answer. We can't arrest our way out of every problem. Sometimes we need to listen more than we punish. We need dialogue, not detention. Understanding, not incarceration. We need to create spaces for open and honest conversations about the issues that divide us. We need to build bridges, not walls. Section 16, Equal Justice Under Law. A principle, not just a phrase, equal justice under law. It's a noble ideal, but it's meaningless if it's not reflected in our courts, in our laws, in our actions. We need to dismantle the two-tiered justice system that favors the wealthy and powerful. We need to ensure that everyone, regardless of their background, has an equal shot at justice. The people's plea protection from terror, not empty promises. People deserve to feel safe in their own communities. They deserve more than empty promises and political posturing. We need real action to combat terrorism and extremism. We need investments in law enforcement, intelligence sharing and community outreach. We are not defined by hate, rejecting racism, fascism and extremism. We are better than hate. We are stronger than fear. We will not let racism, fascism or extremism define us. We will stand up for our values, we will fight for a more just and equitable society, and we will never back down from those who seek to divide us. The simple desire for peace, living without fear in our own communities. At the end of the day, people just want to live their lives in peace, to raise their families without fear, to pursue their dreams without the threat of violence, we owe it to them, to ourselves, to build a world where everyone feels safe and secure. A failure of leadership. When governments neglect, people suffer. When governments fail to address the root causes of terrorism, crime and inequality, people suffer. Communities crumble. Hope fades. We need leaders who understand these issues, leaders who will listen to the people they serve, leaders who will fight for justice, equality and opportunity for all.